हेलो एवरी वन गेव सैन दिस साइड सो टुडे हैंड वी आर डीलिंग विद अ टॉपिक कॉल्ड एज यूरिन फॉर्मेशन इन द यस्टर लेक्चर वी हैव डेल्ट अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ किडनी एंड द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ नेफ्रॉन सो बेसिकली वी डू नो दैट द नेफ्रॉन इज बेसिकली मेड अप ऑफ ग्लोमेरुलस एंड अरिनल टिब्यूल करेक्ट नेफ्रॉन इज बेसिकली मेड अप ऑफ ग्लोमेरुलस एंड एरिनल टिब्यूल so deal with now basically here the urine formation involves three main processes called as glomerular ultrafiltration selective reabsorption and tubular secretion okay so let's get started and all of them are taking place at different different parts of the nephron so basically the first step in the urine formation is the filtration of blood okay deal with which is carried out by the glomerulus itself okay so ultimately we will be calling the first step as glomerular filtration or in other words we can call it as glomerular ultra filtration as well on an average there is like 1100 to 1200 ml of blood is filtered by the kidney per minute okay deal with 1100 to 1200 ml of blood is filtered by the kidneys per minute which constitute almost 1/5 of the total blood pumped out by each ventricle of the heart so basically deal with the case here the glomerular capillary blood pressure causes the filtration of blood through three layers okay so there are three layers which are responsible here and the first the endothelium of the glomerular blood vessel the epithelium of the baumann's capsule and the basement membrane between these two layers okay so the endothelial layer will be the innermost layer in the blood vessel whereas the epithelial with the outer layer of the baumann's capsule and there is a special layer which is present in between both of them called as the basement membrane okay go through now the epithelial cells of baumann's capsule called as podocytes okay the epithelial cells of baumann's capsule are called as podocytes which are arranged into an intricate manner which are arranged into an intricate manner so as to leave some minute spaces called as filtration slits called as filtration slits or we'll be calling them as slit pores as well slit pores as well okay now the blood is basically filtered so finely through the membranes that almost all the constituents of the plasma almost all the constituent of the plasma except the protein passes on to the lumen of the baumann's capsule passes on to the lumen of the baumann's capsule and therefore it is considered as a process of ultra filtration that is the reason we can call it as glomerular ultra filtration as well again i am repeating the case all the constituent of the plasma except the protein will pass into the lumen of the baumann's capsule do remember one thing if there is amino acids if there are amino acids they will be even passing because like the uh, amino acids are the broken parts of the or the building blocks of the proteins so deal with those cases as well amino acid will pass but the protein will not here so the amount of the filtrate formed by the kidneys per minute is called as gfr or rather i'll be calling it as glomerular filtration rate okay the amount of filtrate formed by the kidneys per minute is called as glomerular filtrate rate now here the gfr in a healthy individual is 125 ml per minute okay so the glomerulus will be filtering 125 ml of the blood per minute or rather i'll be going through 180 liters per day 180 liters per day so the kidneys are basically they are literally going through 100 and they are filtering 150 liters of blood per day now the kidneys are built in mechanism for the regulation of the glomerular filtration rate one such efficient mechanism is carried out by the juxta glomerular apparatus juxta glomerular apparatus okay deal with this juxta glomerular apparatus is is a special sensitive region which is formed by which is formed by the cellular modifications in the dct the cellular modification in the distal convoluted tubule and the afferent arteriole at the location of their contact okay 
at the location of their contact whatever the arteriole which is bringing the blood towards the glomerulus that is called as a front arteriole and the blood vessel which is taking the blood back from the glomerulus is called as e front arteriole so basically a fall in the gfr can activate the jg cell juxta glomerular cells which are releasing the renin which are releasing the renin deal with which can again stimulate the glomerular blood flow and thereby bringing back gfr into the normal position hopefully you have already gone through our this lecture the renin angiotensin aldosterone system mechanism if you haven't gone through you just like i'll be asking you it is recommended for you to go through that lecture because you will be your concept will be crystal clear about this topic that how the renin and the how the juxta glomerular cells are working for the uh, for the proper maintenance of the gfr okay deal with now a comparison of the volume of the filtrate formed per day that is 180 liters with that of the urine released from per day so it is only 1.5 liters urine which is released per day from a normal healthy individual and whereas like 180 liters of the blood has been filtered per day so it is suggesting that almost 99% of the filtrate almost 99% of the filtrate is reabsorbed by the renal tubule is reabsorbed by the renal tubule so ultimately this process will be called as selective reabsorption or in simple way we will be calling it as reabsorption so here the tubular epithelial cells in a different segment of the nephron are performing this either by active or passive mechanism how come either by active or by passive mechanism and for example substances like the glucose amino acids sodium etc etc in this filtrate are reabsorbed actively whereas the nitrogenous waste are reabsorbed by passive transport okay deal with a little amount of the urea here the reabsorption of the water also occurs passively in the initial segments of the nephron in the initial segments of the nephron reabsorption of water does occurs but it will be occurring by means of passive absorption during urine formation the tubular cells secrete substances like the proton potassium and ammonia into the filtrate so here the tubular secretion is also an important step in the urine formation because it is helping in the maintenance of ionic and acid base balance of body fluid it is responsible for the maintenance of ionic and acid base balance of the body fluid so here if i'll be going through the complete urine formation in three steps the first step is called as ultrafiltration the first step is called as ultrafiltration whereas the second step is called as selective reabsorption selective reabsorption correct here and if i am going for the third and the last step the third and the final step will be called as tubular secretion tubular secretion so these three steps are comprisedly they are combinedly called as the urine formation steps okay. we will be dealing with the next topic in the next lecture that will be called as the functions of the renal tubule the proximal convoluted tubule then the descending limb of loop of henle then the ascending limb of limb of loop of henle then we will be dealing with the distal convoluted tubule We'll be dealing with what is the function of the vasa recta there, and at the end of the day, we'll be dealing with the collecting duct as well. So stay tuned with the channel. Hopefully, these lectures are beneficial for you guys. Thank you, thank you very much for your so much support. If you do have any kind of questions, you can ask me there in the comment section. Those students who are asking the question, I'm regularly giving their answers as well. I'm trying to make the crystal clear concepts on those topics as well. Okay, thank you.